Hey, I'd like to show you where you can get into trouble with an Invisalign uh, treatment plan and the difference between torque and tip. Um, this is a solid class one uh, case bilaterally. We have somewhat of a deep overbite. We have uh, some lower crowding and that deep overbite is related to a excessive lower curve of speed, as you can see. These teeth need to become straight with a forward movement, but the deep bite precludes that. So you need the upper teeth to sort of get out of the way for these lower teeth to come forward. So you see the lower teeth, they are going to want to unravel forward like that. This, if you isolate the lower arch, is a very predictable movement for Invisalign. However, the upper arch has to move in a similar fashion or else you will have anterior interferences. Now, if you look at the upper arch, you can see in the starting position that the crowding is not as severe as the lower crowding. And so therefore, that's the first hint that there's something tricky about this case. Uh, something that you can refer to here in the tables is called the Bolton analysis. This says mandibular excess, almost two millimeters, and between the canines, almost one and a half millimeters. That means that this patient's lower teeth are wider than the upper, or you could say the upper teeth are narrower. And if you look at the uppers, you can see the laterals. In fact, you can even see the tooth shapes. Um, the laterals are not even seven millimeters. The centrals are wide teeth, but the laterals are narrower than the normal ratio. So that's probably the culprit. On the lower, you even have a, a lateral incisor that's six and a half millimeters. So there's huge lower laterals and narrow upper laterals. Now, the ClinCheck is um, the default that comes back from Invisalign will have the upper teeth indeed move out of the way so that the lower teeth can move. However, upon further inspection, you can see how the upper teeth appear to be moving a bit forward, but it is doing so, if I isolate this, with what is called palatal root torque. If you visualize the roots of the teeth coming up, they are moving palatal to give that effective forward movement of the crown. The reason for this on the screen is this type of movement will not open up any space around these teeth. However, that is a difficult movement for braces. Uh, one of the reasons is the root of this tooth. It's not going this way or else it would be coming out the buccal plate. There's a little bit of a bend here called the column angle. And as you try to torque that tooth back, that root will go up against the cortical plate. And so um, the better way to design this would be to remove that unrealistic, hard to achieve palatal root torque. So I'm going to go modify this right now. Those bite ramps are not a bad idea. I'm going to remove them for now just so we can visualize this. And what I'm going to do is there's the palatal root torque. I'm going to remove that because it's hard to achieve. And if this case is relying on the palatal root torque and you don't get it, the teeth are not going to move. So I'm just eyeballing kind of where the teeth were in the starting position. We'll confirm that in a second. Okay, so now you see the teeth are moving without palatal root movement. Now to get them away from the upper, remember the Bolton discrepancy? You can IPR the lower teeth. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to this patient that from a, for, this is an older patient, uh, actually a former patient of mine, and he's got a little wear on his teeth, and I don't want him having anterior prematurities. And I'm going to clear away, at least in the first round of aligners, uh, the uppers from the lowers. So here you see. Now we have a tipping movement. The lowers can get straight uh, at this point. And by the way, you can make this a little less or you can add IPR to the bottom as well. If you wish, you may talk to the patient. They may have to quote unquote pick their poison. Would they rather have a little IPR on the bottom or space here? Now, that space perhaps looks a little big. Uh, you can talk to the patient about doing some bonding. Remember, this was six and a half millimeters uh, at the end of the treatment. And if the patient doesn't, or an alternative way to go in this case, 
um, would be to IPR the lower. But even still, if you do not advance these upper anteriors, you see the difference in this tipping motion? The fulcrum is moving the crown forward a little bit. Um, that is going to be very achievable and remove those anterior interferences and you'll have a much more reliable clincheck.